Good. All so, fun. Hi, Lauren. Welcome hi. to the show. <laughs> nice to be here. It's really. Amazing. It's fun. amazing. Uh, so we've actually, your sister was on the show very, very, very recently. Beth, really? she, certainly, she certainly brought the heat <laughs> in, her, in uh, her time. A real amazing, yeah. amazing person. Um, so I learned so much from that conversation. So I'm really excited to have you mm. here. But let's start with relationships, right? Because how many diff- how many times do you know you speak to people and and you know it could be about business, it could be about their personal life, but all so often it all comes back to relationships. Yeah. So one thing I found really interesting about you is when I was digging deep in is that you say that you are okay with divorce. Yeah. So let's worse. I I recommend it. <laughs> you recommend. <laughs> I recommend it. I believe in it. I believe in it. My husband and I, when we like really made our vows to each other, which was over 20 years ago now. And we look, I I said, you know, I believe in divorce. If we're not madly in love and it isn't, you know, epic to be together, let's leave each other. I do not believe in staying for the kids, staying because for the money. I don't believe in staying. I believe in being in love. And being happy. And then the joke my husband and I make, it's like, dang, ain't ever going to fuck anybody else, are we? <laughs> right? Like, unless we figure out some kind of something, we ain't like, this is really good, right? Like, we're still really happy. So I think it's actually a much better context of how to keep love alive and great is that you would leave where marriage, you know, offers you well, we'll fix it tomorrow. We'll fix it. Like you're never going anywhere. So you get pretty governmental Mm. and socialistic about like, it just is the way it is versus keeping it hot and sexy and alive and deep. Yeah. I think that uh, it's interesting you say this because when I was thinking about it, I was thinking I've been in positions before where, I mean, I'm 24 now when I was a lot (laughs) younger and uh, I'm 24 now, but in my, in my, younger relationships you know it's, it's also easy to say oh, you know this is going to be together forever yeah but I, th- I think that like when you say that i think that it almost gives the other person and yourself almost an excuse to stop trying right because it's like well if if the, if we're like bound by a, by a yeah. lock and chain then yeah, yeah and i know you're not going anywhere yeah then yeah. then so i, I can yeah. see what you mean by it yeah it's like you you know it's like you turn your life partner into your parent Mm. or your sibling, right? Where you really are bound for life, right? So we really, and then we we deeply want that. Like, we, you know, your, your relationship with your child, you're gonna stay, if you have children, you're, gonna, you're, you're in for life. And so it is fair to go the love of my life, my soulmate is who I'm gonna spend my life with, but there's a way we treat our family, we ch- even treat our children, <laughs> we treat, right, you know, business partners right? Where they don't get the best of you. They get the, you're never leaving me, you. Yeah. 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 And then that's like, we'll fix it tomorrow, you. Right. And so it's, it, it sucks. Right. So the commitment for life doesn't mean you're going to be, you're going to treat it well. And that's not always the case, right? Like you buy a house, you might treat it really, really well because you, you may stay for 20 years or you may sell it. Right. But you you want the value to go up. Right. For some reason, love, because it's so complicated to ask for what you want and really say what you need and really like keep demanding the best versus getting really safe and comfortable. Right. So safety and comfort and ease are competing with hot, sexy and epic. Mm. You could almost say it's the yin yang of love. Yeah, love and desire, two completely different yeah. things, right? Yeah. I when when I speak to, to people, you know, single people and, and they say to me, you know, I just haven't found the one. Yes. I, and when when I hear that, it sort of makes me think, you know, in terms of the one I think that's almost like a scarcity mindset, right? It's like mm. in a planet full of what, like nearly eight billion people. <laughs> is is right? is there gonna be just one person for us? What do you think? Um, well, yes, I think picking your one is the one, Mm. right? Like picking your house is the one, right? Which is very different than being born to a mother. She's the one. And you don't really remember being at the vote, Mm. 
<laughs> right? Right? Like, I don't think I voted. I even make a joke, yeah, you probably did, right? You know, even though you weren't there and remember it here, right? I don't know, right? <laughs> so, um, but, but I do think committing and choosing your life partner, especially if you're going to make babies, is picking the one because you're literally binding yourself forever with another here in physical reality. Um, and then the main thing, I, I, I actually make a very simple flip in how I teach people to look at life dif love differently. So I'll lay it out. It's really easy to get. And then once you get it, you're fucked by it because now you can't unget it. So that's how I really like to teach, right? Like, let me leave you with something you can get rid of. <laughs> um, okay. So here's what I learned in love. I say you have a head. You have a heart and you have a hoo-ha, right? You got a head, you got a heart, and you have a hoo-ha. And if you actually dig in, your head has a list of its ideal, like on a scale of one to 10, your, your head's ideal, your heart's ideal is a 10, and your hoo-ha's ideal is a 10, right? And then please understand, we don't ever just get 10s. Right. We get like 8.7. Right. Like we don't like you're you know, are you a 10 in all those three? Right. And so what what happens is, is humans. Are actually the head, the heart and the hoo-ha think it's all out of 100 percent. And so they start to fight the voices of like what your head wants. And when you think of your head, think of the resume, your brain, money, satisfaction, like. I want our religion, like everything in the head is more like the banker in you that wants what it wants and stimulated that way. Your heart is like, oh my God, if you're the last person on earth and I had to come home and tell you the story, you're the best. I, what it happened to you today, right? Like my heart is so in love. I laugh with you. I roll around with you. I'm a 10 year old with you. It doesn't matter if I'm 60, right? Like my heart is so full. My hoo-ha, yeah. Yeah, you're hot. You're sexy. That shit's hot, right? I'll still fuck you tomorrow, right? Like, so head, heart, and hoo-ha is out of 300%. Versus if it's 100%, your head and your hoo-ha, like, oh, she went to Harvard. Sorry, I'm American. She went to Harvard, and did you see how gorgeous she is and skinny, right? But your heart's like, God, she's a little cold. Right, God, I don't like hearing her story. She's really yeah. self, right? Like, God, but but I got the best of the other world. So what happens is, is I make people go through their history of their love life and find out how you sell out through head, heart, and hoo-ha. And then I make you dream for your head, your heart, and your hoo-ha, and even go back through the history of your catalog and see your patterns through that lens. And then the other thing that happens is if you want a head, heart, and hoo-ha at eight, above an eight, you're going to have to be one too. So then you might have to jump leagues, right? Mm. So then you can start to look at yourself from where you're a six when it comes to heart, right? You don't bring flowers. You are not that romantic. You don't like texting during the day, right? And you're busy, yeah. right? So your heart's a little cold. Your head's a little statistical. And your hoo-ha, you know, wants to see her on Sunday, right? So that's not going to get you the love of your life either, right? You're going to get what you get, right? And so that's a way to really reframe how to look at how you look at everything. That's so, so interesting, right? And I was thinking there, and I was thinking back to my past relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think that I've been so involved with my hoo-ha and so involved in my heart. Yes, the theme which I think that I've gone through is that yeah. I have been so caught up in the narrative or specific things about people that really I haven't accepted, you know, uh, really accepted who they are. I haven't yeah. seen them for exactly what they are. And then yeah. we end up, you know, a in or something. And it's like, you know, the, the red flags, which I seen, I was like, I could have seen two weeks in, I could have seen the same day. I tell yeah. people that it's awful, right? Well, first, so then I'm like, 
I tell people, but you know, so if you go, so I've been coaching for over 20 years, okay? And I deal with people's love lives for over 20 years. And um, if you go, Lauren, tell me something that people don't really get. I'm like, when they're walking down the aisle, they know why they're going to get divorced. They're really fighting not to get divorced over that list. Like, oh, I got it. (laughs) Right. And it's, and literally they knew. Mm. Right. And so people's people are so not, and I really do think it's um, compulsion. Like a dog barks when the doorbell rings, humans want to procreate. They want to get married. Like everyone's like marching to this, like make babies, get married. Or even <laughs> like what, like marching to our instructions in the humanual that we don't even know. And, like we can't even help it, like the compulsion. But then we don't, so then <laughs> the amount of people who end up on their honeymoon going like, God, this is going to last a long time. Right, like you, yeah. right, and you can't even feel how long it lasts till you've like. It's like people also start businesses that they think are brilliant ideas. They can raise the money. They can get there, right? And then uh, they're like, "Why did I do this?" Yeah. And you can't feel those feelings mm-hmm. until you've accomplished this list you've been chasing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, yes, to slow the hell down and really face what is most important to you, and the like what is fulfillment and to not want to, you know, women are more famous than men. Women are way more famous than men of trying to change their partner. Like I thought fa- I'm falling in love with your potential. Yeah, yeah. I see you. And like, and really women are famous for that. Okay. Like, and then I am, that is what you do not want to be famous for. What you want to be famous for is the person you fell in love with you want to see evolve on their own or never change. Like my cute husband, who I freaking love with all my heart, everyone, I understand you're going to be shocked. He has not changed in 22, like the guy. And I also recommend not, sorry, everyone, don't freak out. I do not recommend get finding the one until you're actually really ready to have babies. So Mr. 24 year old, not like learn, fuck. (laughs) <laughs> Try different countries. Like, have the best time of your life, honestly, with the person across from you. And if you get struck, like, I never want to leave this person, you'll know. Yeah. Right? Like, and I mean struck. Like, oh, shit. Like, I didn't, like, I got struck. Not like I was desperate, needed to, thought I was, like, you know, going to disappoint my life if I wasn't married by... Right. So because I got so struck, I rewired everything. Right. And I met David at what was I? I met him at 25, started dating him at 27. And we were married by 30 when I was right. And now I'm turning 50. Right. And it's still just as cute as it always. It really is just as cute as it always was. Because the other thing that's, it's all in my program on how to stay in love, keep love alive, and make sure you understand yourself and understand the other. Because it really is, there really is a process to know yourself. Most people have never been through it or even checked under their little weird hood, right? Or even understand your parents and how much you're a reaction to their lame or great love life. Yeah. 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 I think, uh, you know, what you said there, there's, there's so much truth in it in the sense that, you know, I really could make the case that, you know, falling in love, it should be, you know, a real inconvenient thing, right? You know, you should just be like, oh, I just can't stop thinking about this person yeah, yeah, when, yeah, yeah, whilst yeah. you're going about your day and your business. Yes. And then, like, as you yes. said, you get struck. When we're talking about divorce, it makes me think, it's like, how do you know when to try and salvage a relationship never never if you're either and if you're really i have never like you're like in the 22 years you've been with david how many how much therapy have you needed none how many coaching sessions from other people helping you resolve something i'm like at the most we have one a year and you're like is it because you're an epic communicator lauren and i'm like i am not processing my husband like I'm in love with like I'm a great partner 
and I'm with a great partner and we don't have false expectations of each other at all. And the process I teach um, is it, like, there's really ways to know you're with the, the love of your life. It's like, you know, the, the best way to explain it, maybe today, <laughs> is people are not trying to get a new best friend, right? Like if you have your best friend, right? Now you may not have a best friend and I recommend finding a best friend. I even recommend having a few best friends because once you like fall in, like I have a few best friends and they are the loves of my life, right? So, um, but a best friend is someone you always want to hear their stories. You're not tr like, if they need you, you're there, right? But you have deep respect for their perspective, the way they want to see the world, what they're up to, right? Being in love with someone doesn't go away if you find someone great. It's like you don't fall out of love with your golden retriever if you're into dogs, right? Like <laughs> you're not like, how do I stay in love with my dog? Yeah, yeah. Right, like, are you kidding? Do you love dogs? Yes, great. Yeah. Do you love that kind of dog? Great, <laughs> right? It's like you're not, you know, he still wants you to throw the ball, right? It's the same kind of animal. <laughs> which is the same truth about your best friend. But really what happens in love is we try to fix each other and change each other. And the mm -hmm. minute you're trying to fix and change each other, that's a sign you're not with the right one. And most people don't find their soulmates. Most people find good enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. Because right? they don't do the work. But they're also not doing the math out of, you see the head, the heart, and the hoo-ha are 300%. If you're operating out of 100%, you're operating that life is normal to be dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah. and the same goes true for careers, right? If I go, tell me about your business life, your head, your heart, and your hoo-ha, and I separate out, are they, are they fucking satisfied and chasing down their greatest life? You'd be amazed, they're also doing math. Well, you know, I really care about money, and then my heart's really only, a, I'm an accountant, I'm a this, I'm a that, or I didn't go to college, so therefore I can't. Right. So we have we have so many negative beliefs and theories that we settle. And that's literally the enemy of great. Mm. How have you kept the passion alive in your marriage for so long? Uh, stay fucking. Um, no shit. Um, I have a promise. I have a promise. No matter what. Twice a week. Yeah. All right. Right. No matter what. Twice a week. Except wow. when eight months to, you know, to just had a baby. Right. Like, except for that section of ew. Right. Don't fuck me now. Um, besides that, <laughs> I keep that promise. Yeah. I keep that promise. And when you have a prom, it's like a promise to go to the gym. Right. So I, I work out four to five times a week, no matter what. Right. And I don't. I have a promise. So in the handout method, in what I teach, I teach people to make promises and put in consequences. Okay. So I was raised by a mother that if you eat lettuce, like if you eat very little, you'll be skinny your whole life and you don't need to exercise. Right. That's disgusting. Thanks, Marsha. That was great. But I'm going <laughs> to do better. Right. So I exercise and eat, you know, Dr. Mark Hyman plan. Right. But, and I don't have sugar. And I, I really like don't listen to my inner dialogue. Tell me, get a cookie, get a drink. Don't go to the gym. You'll do it tomorrow. But I can hear all that, those voices. Same with don't fuck your, like, ah, Netflix is better than, than sleeping with your husband tonight, right? So I make consequences in, right? So the truth is, honest to God, how funny is this, ready? If I don't fuck my husband twice every week, I don't get my TV the next week. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, right? Like I'm screwed, right? We'll talk. And then now you can hear that I really want to sleep with my husband. And I know exactly what would make my dark side fuck him this week is so I don't get screwed next week. Right. And I tell everyone in the world that I need that kind of a promising consequence. And any place you're not reliable for keeping a promise that you wish you would keep, you, I make you put in a consequence, a funny one that goes after your dark side. And then the joke is I get your dark side to work for your good. Right. And if Beth was on, she probably talked about this, too. Right. So promises and consequences is my joke. Like if you want to know where the promised land is. It's where you keep promises to yourself, 
that you want to keep, right? Not Israel. Okay. Ha ha ha. Um, and so that's, that's how I keep myself honest. Mm. And guess what I get? And then if I'm going to fuck the guy, I'm going to have fun. Right. Right. So I'm like, who would go to the gym and like not work out? Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's, it's really getting there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Who meditates and doesn't mean it when you're doing mm. it. Right. You're going to yeah. sit and meditate and watch the clock. Yeah. Right. Like, no, do, fucking sit down. Right. Like, so we're not inclined to be our best. We're inclined to be comfortable and a little lazy, but we realize we have to push ourselves. And then that's the rub that I'm always teaching people how to break out of. What do you think about uh, this generation? Now we have pretty young audience, mostly between 18 and 25. What do you think about this whole Tinder generation, this online dating do you think that it's made things easier or do you think it's made things harder? What do you think? Um, I love it. Like I love technology and I don't like, and what it makes possible for connecting to anyone anywhere all over the world. Like that's moving that, that we have potential to be one world because of technology. Right. Um, you know, what Donald Trump's done to it, what like Russians done to it, like what the world is doing to it is same as it ever was. Mm. Right. Like there's something still running very dark, um, immediate gratification, self-centered and yeah. sinister even. Right. Um, so it, I, I love what becomes possible and it is a foundation, but, um, we are nowhere near being good humans to each other. Mm. We're just, we're not like, it's just still quite a mess for real. Right. And no one's saving the environment. So for the younger generation, I apologize for how much work you're going to have to do <laughs> to save the older generations inappropriate pigginess. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. Because I know. I know that um, at the heart of you know the work in which you do, it's not just about becoming more effective, about you know listing out these twelve areas, taking responsibility, you know, improving your love life. I also know that at the heart of it is also being a better human, truth yeah. and integrity. Why? Yeah. Why are they so important to the holistic approach of improving? the potential of a human like to like i think we came to dream and live right like we wanted physical yeah. form this place is gorgeous right like it is magic right to like we will never understand a ladybug no matter how many words we give to it it's like what are you right like the majesty of being alive is such a privilege the ability to love someone and care for someone privilege the ability to have a baby privilege the ability to build a home and right like so there's so much to the privilege of being alive except because we don't know how to tell the truth we don't know how to resolve what we haven't forgiven from our parents because they don't know how to tell the truth because we don't know how to face sex drugs rock and roll we, do, we don't know how to we don't know how to communicate in a way that really makes us great that's all I work on. I really work on human potential and human potential lives in getting into your inner dialogue, how you dream and think about the future and what you came to fulfill on. And most people can't even answer that question without telling me what you don't, what you hate, what you resent, what you wish was different. Like people, you know, one of the science says over 80% of human thought are fear-based and negative. Ready? It gets worse. And they're repeating from the day before. So we think we're having an original thought about why we don't like our boss, why we can't tell our girlfriend she smells, why we can't, like, whatever the fuck it is, we believe our philosophy in our head, and it's repeating, and it's negative. And negative doesn't mean, like, you're a hater. It means you're a fearer. Like, if I say this, they'll get mad. If I say this, why, who am I? Right? Like all the ways we fear are negative and repeating from the day before. And so my job on earth is to help us 
break in to how we think and and see the world. And and basically, I have to get you to see all your fear and negative thinking so that you actually have a choice of what is it to truly be positive. Yeah, it's like it's like that quote you say, where it's welcome to the you that you won't face. Right. That's 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 what it's like. So it's so true. Yeah. And you, I swear to God, we're epic and lovable hmm. and hip, and hypocritical. Yeah. Right. It's awesome. You, I completely agree, though, in the sense that, you know, we we go through the same processes day after day. We we wake up, we check Instagram, WhatsApp, we take a picture of our feet, whatever we do, you know, in, in our day to day lives. And when you think about the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. Yeah. Is the key then to have a big, compelling vision for these 12 areas so so it gives us like a gps to aim for it, uh, period like i don't even have what to add to that's it, you know my life and what i you know so no one can see me right now i am sitting on my bed people i have 80 employees i only do the parts i love i make plenty of money i'm changing the world i'm impacting the things I care about the most, which is foster care and the environment. Like I'm, I'm, I've been serving and being successful and I, and you're like, who did you build the company with? I'm like, my best friend. Right. And you're like, how really? And I'm like, Oh my God, you don't understand. I'm fulfilling on my waking dream life. I am, and, and everyone is capable of this. They just don't have the language, right? Like we don't have the language, the education, right? I teach what I teach into high schools. I've even taught it into seventh graders and they get it. They drink, like it's, we're just not learning the right language to be different. We have been based in fear, right? And I don't think fear is dumb at all, right? Like, look both ways before you cross the street. Yes. Except that has taken over most of life. And so when we stare at an Elon Musk or a Steve Jobs, you know, or Oprah, we're like, what? Right? Like, they are the outliers, not tell me the imprint so we all can be our own outlier. Yeah. But we're not even working on it. Yeah. So I think we are incredibly filled with potential, but we don't have the language to facilitate it. Mm. So it's like we, I, I've heard you say this, and this is in your book, so we've got like a higher and then we've got a lower self, right? Yes. Yeah. How important do you think something like, say, meditation could be to step back and observe those, uh, those thoughts, those patterns, those toxic behaviors? I mean, I'm sure we all have. Wow. Um, I can't think of anything more important, right? Like I can't, all right. Like it's competing with diet, yeah, telling the truth, sleep, but sleep, mm. right? And then I, I teach that sleep is the gateway to your subconscious, right? So like in my method, I teach you how to design your day not design your to-do list, but design your thinking and how to go to sleep at night. Like sleep is not where you rest. It's where you literally meet what you find when you're meditating, right? Yeah. Like it's a way to connect to that which sources your soul, right? Like, come on folks, right? You know, there's something going on that you can't <laughs> explain and we could call it your soul. Right. I'm not talking religion or what they have came up with before. I'm just talking like what the mystery. And so meditation deeply lets you connect to the mystery of before you were born, after you were born and where you go and what is consciousness. And each one of us like, you know, the reason I break life out into 12 different areas is, yes, we do not get different areas of life but what you want versus what i want 
that's your sacred, you know, thumbprint, like every yeah. thumbprint's different. And so what you will discover in meditation about being, mm. if you aren't doing it, you can't come tell me. Right. And so I, I, I swear we are like sex should be explored. Right. You, the amount of people who can't talk about their sex lives or what they want is embarrassing to all of humanity. And then if you look at sex, it's the area where it's the most distorted, fucked up, like people don't tell when someone touched them, right? Like, like the world is so mute on telling the truth that my method is all about how to just frame and get you to have to talk about everything that we're not talking about. Yeah. And you're like, how important is that? How important is meditation, eating right, and learning where we can use our imagination as sacred? Like, oh my God, I can't, like I'd go to every individual human if I had the time. I'd go to 8 billion people to turn them on to how special they are. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's so interesting when I'm thinking about, you know, integrity and truth, right? Yeah. So if it's clear that, that you know, when, when someone isn't truthful, that there's yeah. a fear element to it, a major fear element, right? Because why else would someone, you know, not tell the truth? Epigenetics. Okay. Your daddy didn't, your mommy didn't. Like, I'm oh, sorry. So it's a didn't. learned behavior, yeah. No, it's no? even worse. It's even worse. It's, um, so they did, so epigenetics, so let me explain, because it's really blows my mind, um, still. Uh, so epigenetics, so they did, so here's an example from science of what epigenetics is, right? They took rats, they electrocuted their little feet while they made them smell cherry blossoms at the same time. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay, poor little rat. Okay, then they got the little rats pregnant. Then the rats had babies. And guess what? Those babies were born with sensors to smell cherry blossoms in their nose that didn't exist in the mommy. And their little feet were more sensitive to being like they, they grew like pads on their feet. One generation in like naturally expecting and evolving the species right in the nanosecond of occurring. Okay, so epigenetics explains that everything you got from your parents is in your fucking blood. Mm -hmm. so, so here's the joke I make. Oh, you don't just have your dad's blue eyes. You have his wandering blue eyes. <laughs> right? And... People don't understand. If I hear what you've done in your sex life or in your career, you think I, I can tell you predictions about what your parents did, even though they've never told you a word about it. Right. So you are on your third abortion, girl, and you go I, and I'm embarrassed and I won't tell anybody. And I go, yeah, your mama, go ask her if she had an abortion. And you're like, never, I can't, we're a Catholic. And I'm like, go ask your mother. And you ask your mother and she had to. And you're like, how many examples do I have of this? So what happens is, is everything we lie about and hide and don't face ends up being passed on to our children. And we may be reactions to it, but like, like the, the amount we need to study the truth about our parents is the only way we can evolve in one generation in a good way. So the evolution that's fucked up, right? So you go, Lauren, what do you think's happening with all this Tinder stuff and all that? I'm like, the main thing that's happening is because people never had great marriages. Every child of bad marriages is figuring out poly land. Yeah. No shit. Like, why do I have to get married? Just independent. Have lovers. Maybe yeah. have a few. Right? Right? And, the, like, so so monogamy is going to take a real bath. Mm. Right? Because we're reacting to such hangovers that we never understood from our parents. Yeah. And I don't even think it's bad. 
I just think that's what's happening with, and then people are still lying. People don't understand how much the truth, like the truth sets you free, right? Yeah, no one gets that yet. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's a, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So is the answer then <laughs> to sort of uh, what the example say, maybe set by our parents who, I'm just going to assume that that at the time they were doing the best they could, right? I'll just, Always. I'll just make that Always. as an assumption, right? And is the answer then to sort of if there's been bad, uh, you know, bad uh, identities or behaviors modeled? Let's the... just be let, let's just understand that the ticket onto the planet mm. includes a shit show of bad behaviors by yeah. all parents. Like yeah. it is more like where are the good parents? Where are the good humans? Just look at the state of the whole. How are we handling the environment? How are we handling the government? Like the state of the whole is a level of lying for whatever reasons. Mm. Right. So we're not that great a a world. It isn't we're terrible, but that we're only so far with being great to each other, to ourselves and in life itself. Mm. Yeah. So what would would the case be then to say to just break that mold? Knowing that we are going to have some some impact of of past behaviors, is it just a sort of remodel for a new generation? It, the, the the magnitude of how much can if you hear what's possible with the little rats, right? One generation, one like one year, right? Of good change or bad change will fuck the next generation, or enlighten the next generation. So if you right, so if you meet my children. Right. They're not doing what I did. Mm. Right. They know everything. I'm not lying about sex, drugs, rock and roll. I'm not lying about one damn thing to them. They see my marriage. They see how we operate. And they're they're so much better than I was at that age. Right. So it's like the ability to and potential if you know where you came from is that you can then write, and I literally mean write, like write it down, people, and write, R-I-G-H-T, write for the fulfillment of your life. Like, evolution is next generation does better than the last. And how great you want to do from the last generation, fucking dare you. Let's go, people. Before the planet burns down. (laughs) Yeah. So I know there's yeah. a person listening to this right now, right? And they're going to be like, okay, I yeah. want to tell the truth. I want to yeah. I want to improve yeah. my integrity. I want a human yeah. better, right? Yes, please. What could someone tell themselves to go forward and start doing that? Um, here's what's embarrassingly weird about how easy it is for a human to change. You're probably three promises away, like the right promises and consequences, three promises away from a radically better life. Right? Stop drinking. Give it up for six months, asshole, and see what you figure out for fun and adventure and light. And then, right, like, right, eat no sugar, right? Tell the truth about sexually speaking with your girl or your boy, right? Like, we are very few promises away from radically being different. Change is not hard. It, it's a lie that it's hard. We're fucking lazy to be the change we need. So you're so what's the one promise? As you're listening to me, you're mm-hmm. like, what's the one? And I don't mean New Year's resolution. I mean promise to your life. That if you did that promise and you put it, you need a consequence because if you're not likely to keep that promise, put in a consequence, which means you need a buddy, tell someone, right? And keep a promise for at least six weeks and you will never be the same again because we are the common denominator. And so when you start, when you make a change, it actually crosses the whole board. And if I made and sat with you and I said, tell me something you changed once where you finally like actually kept a promise, even though you might never have called it that, right? Oh, I stopped going to bed late. It could be as dumb as a curfew or lose your Instagram, Mm. right? Lose your, right? Like, so 
a promise will change your life and it'll cha- and you'll see what I mean. And then it changes your inner dialogue. Most people just need a goddamn diet, right? Like I'm not even kidding, right? Stop eating carbs. Really? Mm. Stop eating carbs and sugar. No flour, no sugar, six weeks. Yeah. Right? And you can have your booze, right? But nothing else. And you will never be the same again. Right? And see what happens. Right? See how you feel. See how your brain changes. See how you, like, like we literally feed ourselves crap and want to feel good. Ha, ha, ha. No, you feed yourself crap. I promise. You feel a little like crap. You feed yourself broccoli. See how you feel. Right? So I love getting my hands on people to make one promise to someone in front of them for a blocked amount of time. If you break your promise, right? You, oh, it was my birthday. You break your promise. You ate the cake, right? You had six drinks, not four, like your promise, right? You start six weeks over again. Okay. The one which comes to mind, <laughs> I'm just thinking back to, to the most impactful things, which or bad habits, which I've broken. And we yeah. talked about this on the show. I remember maybe 18 months to two years ago, uh, I was in a relationship as well at the time, and I decided uh, that I was going to give up pornography, right? Yes. I was going to completely yeah. quit porn, cold to yeah. a lot yeah. harder than I thought it would be, um, but I can't yeah. think of a more impactful bad habit, which I've broken, right? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. So yeah. We, we've, you know, like we've like talked about this like openly on the show. And what I've realized like since then is like since I give it up is like it like completely rewired my brain you know like i started seeing yeah. women as women again you know Aww, <laughs> like like yes. the little things like like a woman's smell and and things like this yeah and, and beautiful when... nice work every man hides in porn mm. right right yeah. like it right like what do you do with your penis it's talking all day long yeah. right so it, it's a brilliant thing for your age group in like it's just it because it if you keep getting satisfied which and you pretend that that's satisfaction, right? You keep getting paid by that job. It's a lot of money, and you're not really getting what you need, mm. right? We get stuck with kind of we get locked into habits, yeah, right? That don't let us evolve. 100%, and porn yeah. wins many awards mm. for being, you know, creepy on in the sex reality. Yeah, yeah, that that's it, and and I think like a part of it is what we talked about in the show, where it's like just becoming aware, you know, it's like I would do, it and then I'd like sit there, and I'd be like, ah, you know, like I don't feel good about myself, and you know, and yeah. the other thing I realized is since I come out of a relationship, is that if you have porn, why would you ever go out and meet someone, right? Why would you ever go out and and date people when you know, like you got access to like threesomes and these all these long list of endless right. women yes. when you can just literally yes. in just two clicks you can get them up you know yeah. so no it's really quite a same with you know eating healthy right like it's just we we are so disconnected from physical integrity mm. right and then because we don't have physical integrity, you can't have spiritual integrity and you can't have emotional integrity because we're physical beings. And so if our actions disrespect our emotions and our spirit, like, oh, fine, who cares? Whatever. Nobody needs to know. Let me lie. About, right. Like, so we blow shit off and then we don't feel sacred. Hmm. So. Seems like a fair consequence to me, except <laughs> the planet's burning, so we might want to grow up soon. Definitely. I want to... <laughs> this has been an amazing conversation. And i just yeah. got a few more questions to ask you, Laura. Yeah, please, please. One of the things I'd love to ask you is, you know, the Handel Method, this is yeah. amazing. Your book is amazing. The Handel Method Thank has gone you. into Harvard, I believe. It's into Harvard. Is it, um, is it, Stanford. Stanford, yeah, really, Stanford, Stanford, yeah, Stanford, 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 yeah. Stanford, Stanford Business School. That's I have it. a thing for Northern California. 
Oh, okay. Okay. So I I'd did. love I'd love to ask with your business, which is yeah. a massive, massive impact. I think it's like the biggest life is it the biggest life coaching or it might be. I don't I have I'm not comparing, but yeah. nobody has eighty employees and yeah. forty full time coaches and blah blah blah. Yes, I'm doing right. very well. <laughs> I'd love to ask, what is the biggest obstacle you faced in growing it and how did you do it? How did you overcome it? God, I have the funniest jokes for this right now because okay. I'm making fun of yeah. Um, well, first of all, here's my little snarky speech. Can you believe I was one of the first life coaches that ever existed? Like no one even knew what I was when I like I, back in the '90s. Go look it up. There were no fucking life coaches, right? Like I was <laughs> like, I'm a life coach, and they're like, what that, right? So, so not only did I have to build the industry to exist i then had to compete in my own industry that didn't exist <laughs> in those 20 like are you fucking kidding the amount of work i had to do i had to make it exist and then compete in it okay so um how hard was that um it was it was like uh never getting out of winter Right. It was like like and winter's fun if you're dressed right and you're fight like you're fighting the good fight. My joke about my first 15 years. I ready everybody. I'm, I'm quite a Jew. You all just brace yourselves for me. And I'm not religious. OK. So, and my husband's not a Jew. Right. Like that's how <laughs> not Jewish and Jewish I am. OK. Um, I call my first 15 years the Old Testament. Right. Like hard. <laughs> killing it right <laughs> working to death and then you're like and what's happening now i'm like it feels a little like spring like things are growing and then i call them this new era the new testament oh, right wow. i'm like it's oh amazing. it's so much easier right it feels like it's wanted it's not like begging people to go deeper into themselves Right. So that's been my experience over time. It's taken a long fucking time to have it stop being hard. Hard just means sell, 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 prove, 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 prove. prove. And then, you know, really be willing to whore myself in the nicest way I can say that to be a rainmaker and meet the right people so that I can get into Stanford and get into MIT. Like the amount of like magic I required to make still seems the same but um if you the weather's warmer how did you know to keep persevering with it and was there a point in which you would have quit or was it just a case of i'm just gonna do this and it is just gonna work or um i have never had a problem getting my own 20 clients or 30 clients right like i have like when i was 28 29 I, I I was I had I had no problem right I'm not I'm not shy as you can hear right like I my issue was never could I make a good living ever it right like I you know like I really could right I could charge hours I did good work I was like and then my line was you know what am I gonna you know, live and die and have done 649 people in my whole lifetime. I'm like, that's red. That's stupid. Right. Like, I don't want that. That's not enough for the world to stop earning. Right. For humanity. So I from a very early on when I figured out how I could do it. Um, I then just had a big dream about reaching the whole wide world. And you're like, so on some level, I've never made more money than I made once upon a time because all I've been doing is building a company, right? So I am, if you see my, if everyone could see my clothes, right? Or see my life, right? You'd be like, she drives a prayer. Like, you know, like I'm, I'm environmentally correct. I live in a 1790s farmhouse. We have chickens, right? My <laughs> husband makes my kids turn the water off while they're, you know, in between soaping up. Like we're, we're like trying to be goody two shoes on save the world. But I want to reach the world. Mm. That's, amazing. That's amazing. So it's never been a problem. I was born to be an evangelist, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, I was. That's amazing. That's amazing. I commend you. Thank for, you. Because you know, obviously what you said there, I mean, yeah, 
there's no doubt that it would have you would have faced so many challenges along the way yeah so. i was yeah and i'm in love with humanity which was the opposite of what i would have said when i started my career i used to my line was because i was an environmental studies major and i used to be save the trees kill the people they're fucking up my trees I fucking hate you people and then I had the revelation the trees will be fine the tree like the earth will go on the issue is not that it's that the humans don't see the trees uh oh I literally was like sorry daddy I studied the wrong stuff wow. <laughs> you paid a lot of money for me to have a one line right <laughs> that was it dad oh wow <laughs> For the people that have listened to this day and they want to yeah. they want to connect with you further, they want to yes. know more about your work, yes. can you tell us about the, the NEU programs? So my dream is not to reach just the elite, which I'm doing. My dream is to have made the content so that I can make it available to everyone to be that fucking smart and not need their hands held directly by me, but get their hand held by me, right? So I developed this product. It's my second, like I am real, and it's now finally epic, and it's called Inner You, okay? And there's two, there's actually three inner, there's, oh, sorry, guys. There's four inner yous I've made, and every, because I've been working for 20 years, my content is not the same per program. I know that's hard to believe, but I am not, like, singing the same song everywhere okay so inner you life is my basics and it basically makes you design your life and start to break into your inner dialogue it also is a structure where you get once you pay your fee to get in you're in for life i promise i don't take it away i don't make you pay every year right if you want new content you can buy it if you want to find a coach that deals with you directly you can buy it, but there's free coaching sessions, there's classes, and there's a way to meet a buddy. So you don't have to practice on your best friend, you can practice with someone in Tennessee, right? Or anywhere in the world and meet people. And it's Zoom, like it's all video, and you make buddies and we have classes constantly. Like my dream is a world community of like-minded people who can share. So there's inner you life, there's inner you love. There's inner you career, which is all about bit. So business and love are not my basics, though you don't need to do inner you life to do inner you love or career. It makes sense. Okay. And then there's also inner you student because you can hear how much I care about the kids. So um, by all means, folks, find inner you life or inner you love. What if you're right, right? Like if your love life is like, oh, God, she wants to marry me. He wants like, I want to get married. Like, hurry up, go do love first. Right. <laughs> and if your whole life is like, I'm pretty settled, but I really don't know what I want to do. I want to be pushed. Go do inner you life. Right. And you could just listen to it. You don't even have to fucking do the homework. We've been studying like you have to do the homework or don't you? And the answer is, if you listen to it, it will compel you eventually to do the homework. And if, you, if you're if you a goody two-shoes and you like doing homework, it will rock your world. But it's intense, guys. It's intense. Yeah. It's not, it's, there's no joke here. Right. Yeah. And it'll be linked Thank below <laughs> so everyone can just swipe up on this and they'll, they'll see the links. Um, please, just, please. She's got some quick questions for you, Laura. Yes! Some rapid fire ones. Are there any books which have impacted your life? Uh, the book that changed my life, honestly, the most is Still Life with Woodpecker, which is um, Tom Robbins. Hmm. And the whole thing, it's, he's, he is the funniest. It's a comedy. It's brilliant. It's, a, it's like Kurt Vonnegut, but it's easier to read than Kurt. And um, it's about how to make love stay. So it changed my entire perception on myself and love in my 20s. And it's still my favorite fucking book. Damn. Are there any rules which you love to break? Yes, many, actually. I love to speed. I'm certainly only like I do not promise to fo follow drug laws on planet Earth. 
<laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a drinker. I prefer weed, um, and I do try some funky shit a few times a year, and my kids know it. What? <laughs> um, yes, it's true. Um, yeah, and I am common knowledge challenged. I do not read the news. I never have. I can't tell you who anyone, president or people, like I only pay attention to things in my life. I love that. I love that. That's very rebellious on this planet. It certainly is. My last right? question before I ask you to just in, uh, yep. tell our audience where they can find you further is yeah, yeah, yeah. imagine a scenario in which uh, hypothetically every person in the world could hear uh, a message. Everyone was tuned into the same frequency, basically. And yeah. Lauren, unfortunately, you haven't got long left. You have Woo-hoo! to leave a. <laughs> you I have did to it. Leave, <laughs> you have to leave a part in message. <laughs> Gotta go. Next, next round. Next yeah. round, yeah. What would your message be? Stop lying about what you think, what you feel, what you want, and what you've done in the past. Love yourself is to never lie, and to be true to yourself is to never lie. And we are fucking liars, which is the ultimate crime against being. I love that. I love that. There you go. Yep. Are you on social medias and can you point I our am. audience to? I please, I'm, please. I'm everywhere, even though I have <laughs> nothing to do with it. I, I make sure I like everything being said, but it, everyone, you're like, do you know what you're doing on there? I'm like, no, I don't look, um, but I've, I've seen. Um, so yes, you can follow me. It's all my shit. Um, and it's, and it's Handel group and inner you, um, right. All, like inner you inner, and then just a you all one word, right. Is our world of digital programs and content. And my book, if you want to do it real cheap, Mm-hmm. is maybe it's you, it's you yeah. right and then obviously you can tell i make you cross out the maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe and it's my tagline like anything that's not working in my life i go oh shit maybe it's me <laughs> i love that lauren thank this has you. been a pleasure thank you so much for your time it's been an amazing conversation really and it's an honor i love I love what you're doing and what you're making possible for people and reaching people and all your people that are listening. Like we are galvanizing and changing the world every 